good morning good morning family good morning good afternoon good evening and welcome 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 once again to every one of you god bless you all in jesus Christ's name if you're coming in for the very first time you're very much welcome good morning to you grace 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 god bless you good morning to you sabrina good morning to you sazini good morning or good afternoon welcome to you sarah burns good morning to you you are welcome kamisha welcome to you pauline you welcome welcome to you larry van welcome what a beauty academic you welcome god bless you welcome to you ask manabard welcome to you god bless you love it thank you all so much for joining me this morning i believe this was an abrupt life where this teaching came to my spirit and i decided to share with every one of us i believe it's going to bless you i believe this is a word for you god has a word for you through this message and so i'm gonna encourage you to watch it to be there with me watch right till the very end i believe god is going to speak to you through this word and also let's go on and share the word before we go ahead please let's go on and share with our friends our loved ones our sisters our family members the people we believe this word is going to be a blessing so please help me share it with them god bless you as you do so in jesus name and also as you come in don't forget to like the video very important family so it can help us to extend its reach and also please subscribe if you are new become a part of the family i believe god is going to use this family to bless you welcome to you mr timothy you're always here welcome welcome to you our greater you welcome jesus king of kings welcome Dove, welcome to you in jesus Christ's name i just want us to worship god right now and just thank him before we get into the word we get into this message i love you wisdom christ i love you more let's just go on and worship god and thank him for this special day for this beautiful day for this time this opportunity once again in his presence to partake of his blessings to partake of his mercy his grace his favor his love just worship him thank him this morning all know his holy name just praise him this morning tell him lord i thank you i'm grateful father we thank you once again we give you the praise we give you the glory we honor you for this time in your presence we honor you for this privilege Village. we are grateful Lord Jesus and we do not take it for granted we thank you for the gift of life Lord we pray that as we proceed this morning may you always be enthroned Lord not just in the heavens but right here where we are in our midst in this place in this atmosphere Lord be enthroned and receive all the glory in Jesus name let it not be man Lord let it not be me let it not be my sister but you king of glory and may you receive all the glory be praised Praise Father and Holy Spirit. We thank you for all trans. We thank you for all trans. In the name of Jesus, we receive all trans this morning as this word comes forth, as it's sent forth, and as it's released in Jesus' mighty name. And we just cover everyone with the blood of Jesus, every sister and every brother with the precious blood of Jesus. And we decree, Lord, that after this word must have come forth, there will be a transformation, a change, a renewing of the mind the heart and also the mind the soul lord in the mighty name of jesus and we also ask you for strength lord bless us with strength jesus strength in jesus mighty name amen let it be a performance also in the mighty name of jesus amen and amen hallelujah hallelujah i don't know how many are happy to be in the presence of the lord but i'm always excited david said i was glad when they said let us go into the house of the lord because there is no place like the house of the lord there is no place like his presence his presence is all we need his presence is beautiful and he in his presence there is fullness of joy i want us to get straight into this word there are seasons in our lives as believers and as christians there are seasons that we face and there are seasons that we have to go through a season has to do with the moments of manifestations or temporal happenings a season is never permanent a season comes and it goes season comes and goes says solomon they will always come but they will go and the bible also makes us to understand that as long as the earth exists, sea time and how 
harvest time will never cease. It means there is a season to plant, there is a season to harvest. When we read from Ecclesiastes, Solomon made this very clear to us. He spoke about the seasons. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, there are seasons that govern the lives of the people of God, of believers, of Christians. And it's always very important for us to know the seasons that we find ourselves in so that we know what is required of us, what God wants us to do, what is expected of us. Every season has an expectation. Every season has something to give, something to offer, something that it brings. Every season has a purpose tied to it. That is the importance of seasons and the importance of us knowing the seasons that we find ourselves in, be it in the house of God or even in your natural life, in your life as a person. It's always good to know what season you find yourself in. Before a lady will grow up and get married, there is a season of preparation and also she's first of all a child before she grows up to become an adult and then a woman and all of that. So like it's like a morning season, afternoon and evening season. Like we all know this is commonly established by preachers and men of God who have gone before us. They talk about the seasons of men's life. But this morning we are not going to be looking at those natural seasons that brings natural occurrences in our lives. We are going to be looking at spiritual seasons. The seasons that you go through before the crown is given to you. The seasons that you go through before your manifestation or before the glory rather, before the reward. The seasons that you go through. This is very, very important so that you know where you can find yourself or where you find yourself at a particular time. Hallelujah family. And so seasons are real in the kingdom of God. When Jesus came here on earth, there was a time for him to learn and there was a time for manifestation in his assignment. We are going to look at these seasons briefly this morning and the first has to do with a season of encounter. A season of encounter. And this season has to do with your encounter with God. Not an encounter with man. Mark this. An encounter with the Father in heaven. An encounter with God as a Christian and as a believer. Now before we all came to know Christ, there was an encounter. Before we all came to the point where we find ourselves in, there was an encounter that we had. And this encounter had to do with God all the whole spirit of God encountering us through the Holy Spirit hallelujah family through the Holy Spirit and so if you miss that I don't know but I believe personally in my spirit that there was an encounter that each and every one had before knowing God and that encounter helped you to know God to understand who God was before I came to Christ I had an encounter I was listening to a preacher and she said some things about me that I couldn't believe. At that time, I never knew much about prophecy. I never knew someone could prophesy or someone could say something about another person's life and it becomes real or it's something that is true. But I heard her speaking and she said some things and it was like she was speaking to me. And I was like, who is this lady who is speaking to me? She speaks like she knows me. She speaks like she has seen me before, but she has never seen me before. She has never met me before so who's this lady and through that process I believe it was a process God wanted me to encounter or to experience in order for me to know him you will always know God through men or circumstances but the encounter has to do with men and with God when you have to know him hallelujah and so I asked myself who this lady was and then it dawned on me that I could go and check where she was fellowshipping the church and all of that just so I I can meet with her and talk with her and ask her how she knew about me and what she was saying or maybe explain the thing that she was saying on the radio it was through the radio maybe explain it more to her and tell her hey you were speaking about me and this is what I'm going through what should I do or what should I not do so when I went there I looked for the location and um, you know the information that I needed a contact and I went to that ministry now when I went to that ministry I met with this woman of God 
Lord and um, she wasn't preaching that day but her husband so she was a wife to a pastor so she wasn't preaching that day her husband was preaching that day so when I went there I was so happy in my spirit I felt like I belonged there the moment I got in there it was a beautiful atmosphere I saw them worshiping God that was before the message um, it was on Sunday I went there for the service it started beautifully they worshiped they praised it was so free you know no restrictions no limitation I was like wow what a beautiful atmosphere I want to belong here I want to partake of this I love this and I want to become a part of this and so God used that word to bring me to him he used that encounter to get me to know him and so it wasn't just about the word that the lady spoke about me it was about what God wanted to do in my life what God wanted to show me through that word through that message through that encounter I don't know what you are going through and I don't know what you are faced with but I'm here to tell you that the Lord is using that situation to bless you for a greater cause God is using that situation to bless you more than you are blessed right now to take you to a particular place a great destination to prepare you to reveal to you who you are to reveal to you as well who he is it's not just about what you are facing right now. It's about what God wants to do in your life. It's about what God is set to do through you. And so whenever you're going through a particular situation, don't be, you know, tempted to see it like it's just about what is happening. There is something greater than what you are faced with right now. There is a greater purpose. Hallelujah, family. I don't know how many people encounter Jesus and how your encounter was, but there is always an encounter. And I also want us to look at this from the Bible. Many of the people who walked with God in the days of old, they encountered God. Your encounter is going to help you to know God. That is the purpose of an encounter. It will help you to know God. Let's look at this scripture quickly from Exodus chapter 3. I'll quickly read from verse 1 to 6 the Bible says now Moses kept the flock of Jethro his father-in-law the priest of Midian and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God even to Horeb his place of encounter and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush and he looked and behold the bush burnt with fire and the bush was not consumed and Moses said I will now turn aside and see this great sight why the bush is not burnt hallelujah thank you very much we'll come back to that the bible says moses was keeping his father's his father's in-laws flock that's after he ran away from egypt because he murdered the egyptian that was taking advantage of the israelites he killed him and he thought no one saw him but when he realized that somebody actually saw him he had to run away for his life because he knew the consequences and so he ran not knowing that him running was going to lead to an encounter when he ran he got married he met with his wife got married to Zipporah and he began to take care of his father's in-laws flocks the Bible said 40 years after Moses ran take note of this family he was 40 when that event that scenario happened the killing happened but it was only after 40 years another 40 years that God encountered Moses when you always hear of the angel of the Lord know that that is God himself hallelujah when you hear of the angel of the Lord same thing that happened with Jacob when he wrestled with the angel of the Lord but that was him wrestling with God and so what happened was Moses had this encounter at home you know before he killed that man he knew there was a God he knew that it was wrong for one person to be maltreating another person but that encounter was still missing there was a missing part of it which was the encounter with the Lord the encounter with God because it's the encounter that is going to define your mission to you take note of this family is the encounter that will reveal your purpose is the encounter that will reveal your assignments it is true the encounter very important 
Hallelujah. And so what happened was he encountered the Lord. He saw a bush that was burning but wasn't consumed. And so it struck him. He was like, what is this that I'm seeing? When he went closer, please take us back to that scripture. When he went closer, the Bible says, and Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Yeah, am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father and the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face for he was afraid to look upon the Lord. Hallelujah. God introduced himself to Moses. God told Moses who he was and he said, I am the God of your fathers. He spoke about the God of Abraham, the same God that Abraham served in other words, the same God that uh, Isaac served, the same God that these people served, Israel, Jacob served, is the same God that is speaking to you right now, that you are faced with. And he also spoke to him saying, I am the I am that I am. So you see, this is where this verse clip comes from. The God of Isaac, the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob is very, very, you know, very, very good. It's not it's nothing bad for us to use this when we are praying. We just remind ourselves that there were people who went ahead of us. There were people who encountered God, whom God worked with, and it was powerful and marvelous. It was great. And now these people have made a way for us to understand who God is. These people who went ahead of us, they have prepared the way, prepared the path. Now we are walking through it. Remember what the scripture says. I think I'm going to quickly read this if I've written it down. I don't know if I wrote it down, but this is very important. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12. The Bible says, in order that you may not grow disinterested and become spiritual sluggards, but imitators, and it says, behaving as do those who through faith by their learning and entire personality of God in Christ and in absolute trust and confidence in his power, wisdom and goodness and by practice of patience, endurance and waiting and now inheriting the promise of God. This one explains so much because it's the amplified version but it says we should follow those who through hope and patience obtain the promises of God. They went through it. They followed God and they waited. They were hopeful. They were patient. They endured but they followed him anyways and the Bible said they obtained the promise of God just like Abraham did. When you read further you're going to see that it talks about Abraham who followed God, who waited on God, and finally obtained Isaac, the promised son. Hallelujah. So God made him to understand that this is the God that you are faced with. So I'm not just any kind of God. I'm not from nowhere. In order for you to easily understand who I am, you have to know that I am the God of your fathers. Because when you know that I am the God of your fathers, you will easily know who I am. That is what God was trying to do. God was trying to make Moses to know who he is, who he's speaking to. So encounter is very, very important, family. And when Moses had that encounter, the Bible said God spoke to him, gave him an assignment, even though Moses had a lot of excuses. But then God told him, go, I will be with you. He said, I could not speak. God said, am I not the God of the blind? Am I not the God of even those that speak? Am I not the God who created them all? Go, I will tell you what to say. I will give you the words that you have to speak. And Moses said, oh, I have nothing. They will not believe me. God gave him a rod. And through that rod, he was able to perform mighty miracles by the power of God. Hallelujah. So encounter family. Encounter. Abraham had an encounter with God. And God called him out of his father's house. 
encounter is very important pray to God and say Lord encounter me even if you have already given your life to Christ but yet you know there is an assignment of God upon your life still take this prayer ask God to encounter you and to reveal to you what your purpose is the second season has to do with preparation with preparation a lot of times when we are going through preparation we feel like God is not coming through no you have to understand that in your season of preparation God has to prepare you before releasing you into manifestation which is the third season we are going to come into in your season of preparation God gets you ready now when God calls you when God encounters you the first thing you have to seek for is to know him and the second thing is to grow and you cannot grow without knowing God it is true God that you grow through your knowledge of God that you grow so the first thing you seek for is to grow and the sec the first thing you seek for is to know him and the second is to grow when God calls you hallelujah and now through preparation you not only get to know who God is but you get to discover who you are that is the importance of preparation family you get to discover Discover who you are hallelujah you get to discover your gifts you get to discover your talent you get to discover your call or your calling you get to discover your office that is the importance of preparation now when you are being prepared you have to understand that it's a time of service you've got to serve in the house of the Lord or in the kingdom of God in any area God has called you to serve you have to serve so when God is preparing you serve when God is preparing you learn when God is preparing you preparing you be open to grow hallelujah family receive all you can through that preparation receive all you can while you are being prepared because after the preparation comes the manifestation now Jesus was prepared for a very long time at the age of 12 he was found in the temple he was learning asking questions as well and now uh, at the age of 30 he got baptized and his ministry was was just three years God took a long time to prepare Jesus while he was on earth just for a manifestation of three years so if your preparation is too lengthy don't be angry it also speaks about the volume of your assignment it tells you the weight of your calling it tells you the weight of your calling God would take long time to prepare somebody whom is going to release into a great ministry a great assignment hallelujah so rejoice when God is preparing you rejoice when you are going through that preparation I think we've spoken about preparation here so we will not talk more much about it the next has to do with manifestations Romans chapter 8 and verse 19 the Bible says that this earth is, is waiting for the earnest expectation of the creation or creator waited for the manifestation of the sons of God hallelujah the earth is waiting for our manifestation and so manifestation is very important manifestation is needed the Bible says for the kingdom of God is not just by mere word but by the demonstration of power power that is where manifestation takes place it's not just about words or speaking all the time but we've got to manifest God's power manifest God's glory manifest God's grace manifest even his love manifest his mercy when you preach something you manifest it that is how you get people to believe in you or believe what you are preaching if you don't manifest what you are preaching it's gonna be hard for people to believe it hallelujah so God wants us to manifest God wants us to receive manifestation is not just about us manifesting in our kingdom assignments but also you receiving the promise receiving the blessings finally Finally, many of us are trusting God to be married after the preparation comes the marriage hallelujah just like Esther Esther was being prepared for one year but after her preparation came her marriage it came her marriage so if God is preparing you rejoice because after your preparation comes what your manifestation manifestation is very important we have also spoken about manifestation so I will not take long on that now I want us to look at this number four season which is where many people find it hard to, to either remain in or to to pass to to succeed in 
this season this particular season it has to do with a season of testing it has to do with a season of testing like it or not family in the life of every true child of God true I tell you every true believer every sincere Christian there is a season of testing you must go through the test you must be tried by God even after your manifestation you will still be tested and I'm gonna tell us the things that testing produces in us the importance of God testing us the importance of going through the trying seasons of our lives many of us when we get to that season we want to give up we want to let go that is you know the season right before your reward shows up because the last is gonna be the reward the season right before you give birth you know that pressure becomes too much to bear and you just want to let go not knowing that a beautiful baby is about to come forth a wonderful child a wonderful promise a great fruit is about to come forth hallelujah this is prophetic right now there is somebody you are going through that season right now God says to tell you a beautiful promise is about to come forth you are about to bet something big you are about to bet something great nations are in your womb and they are about to come forth just like like Rebecca the Bible says she was pregnant with two nations nations are in your womb that is why there is a battle going on in your womb because you are pregnant with nations you are pregnant with destinies they are destinies that are tied to you they are destinies that are connected to your purpose they are destinies that are connected to your assignment and God is looking unto you God is waiting for you to birth for those destinies to do that which you have to do in order for those destinies to be blessed in order for those destinies to be transformed to be changed hallelujah god wants you to know this when you are going through your testing period when you are going through a trying time it is because something great is on the inside of you and it's about to come forth hallelujah I want us to look at these scriptures quickly as we talk about testing james chapter one and we'll read from verse two to three the Bible says, my brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith walketh patience. Number one importance of testing is patience. The bread of patience, hallelujah. You have to bread patience, family. It's very important in the kingdom of God. God will not bless you with a great ministry if you cannot be patient, if you don't have the ability to be patient, even with people, because people will test you. People will come after you. People will attack you. But then through patience, the patience that God has built on the inside of you, you will be able to accommodate these things, to wait on God for a turnaround, to wait on God for his move my goodness something is happening we are gonna be praying after this hallelujah somebody is about to be released to the next season in the name of Jesus hallelujah after that season the Bible tells us after after the test patience comes forth so the number one thing that is bedded in the time of testing is patience a lot of times we say you're pregnant you're not just pregnant with your blessings you are pregnant even with patience and you're going through that pressure because patience needs to comfort yes family you are pregnant with endurance because you're gonna need it when you get married you're gonna need it you are pregnant with virtue because God is raising you up to be a man of integrity a woman of integrity and so if your ministry is delayed because God wants you to become a woman of integrity wait on him trust in him depend on him when that ministry is bedded when it comes forth it's going to be different there will be integrity tied to it there will be virtue tied to it hallelujah you are pregnant with that virtue you are pregnant with it Bible says patience will comfort and I also want us to look at this something is happening thank you Holy Spirit the Bible says in first Peter chapter 1 
and verse 7 that the trial of your faith be much more precious than of gold that perish it it means that when your faith is being tried it is more important than gold that perish it it means that process of your faith being tested is more important than you receiving gold than you having gold than the importance of gold than the value of gold it says though it be tried with fire might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ what a great reward hallelujah the Bible says praise and honor and glory somebody is bearing for praise somebody is bearing honor somebody is bearing glory at the appearance of jesus christ because that is what the testing of your faith produces in the kingdom of god that is what it brings forth hallelujah that is what it brings forth that is what it releases praise honor and glory not just for your sake but for the sake of christ so that when Jesus comes again, the second time, you will receive your crown. The importance of being tested. That is the importance of being tested. Until a man is tested, there will be no testimony. Until a man is tested, there will be no glory. Until a man is tested, there will be no honor. There will be no honor, family. You are not truly honored if you haven't gone through the test. You are not truly glorified if you haven't gone through the test. God loves you. Yes, he loves you so much. But he loves you even more to allow you to go through that test. Because he knows what is waiting for you. And we're going to look at these two scriptures before we go. And let's look at Job chapter 23 and verse 10. The Bible says, But he knoweth the way that I take. When he tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Hallelujah. Somebody is coming for us gold after the test. This is a man who was going through so much. He was being tested by God. He was being tested by God. He spoke this word in his testing seasons. He said, Lord, I know it very well that even though I'm going through this is a test, but after this test, I will come forth as gold. After this test, I will be better than I am before. After this test, I will be greater than I am before. Hallelujah, than I was before, sorry. After this test, after this test, you will spring forth by the help of the Holy Ghost. The Bible said God restored him twice as much. So it's not just about the test family, but you have to pass when you're being tested. And the last scripture we're going to look at today is Deuteronomy chapter 13. And we'll read from verse 3 to 4. The Bible says, Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet. I'm going to explain this. Or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God. God can prove us, family. Look at this. It says, The Lord your God proveth you. It means God is proving your love. Hallelujah. And it says, to know whether ye love the Lord your God. And it says, with all your heart and with all your soul, not just loving him, but with all your heart and soul, ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. Hallelujah. Now, you know, Sometimes when we are going through our trying moments, the time of testing, your wilderness as many call it, um, storms and all of that, you seek for a word. You are, you, know, you are anxious for a word from the Lord. You need God to speak to you. You need God to tell you where you are going to. You need God to tell you what is going to happen next. You are, you are anxious for a word and sometimes you can go and get it in the wrong places. The Bible said there was a time when God was quiet in the life of a king called Saul and he went to the wrong place to hear a word, to listen to get a word, to know what to do, he went to consult a medium, a witch. And that was very wrong. That displeased God. That angered the heart of God. Now, there are people that will comfort and will tell you things 
Uh, you know that's why we, we said this like be careful of itching ears itching ears there are people that will comfort and tell you things because they know that you are anxious to receive those things or to hear those things there are people that will take advantage of your testing season of of your anxiousness of your desperation to to you know exploit you as well to tell you what god is not saying to tell you what god has not spoken be careful of those kind of people in your testing season that is what the bible is saying be careful of those people that will come and tell you those things or give you those dreams that god has not said that god has not spoken and be careful of itching ears when you are going through your wilderness when you are going through that testing season be careful don't be too anxious don't be too desperate because the devil will take advantage of that to tell you what is not of god to tell you what god has not spoken hallelujah the key is to be patient and the key is to trust in the Lord the key is to wait upon him even you know it's gonna be very hard but you have to family you have to so when you're going through your testing period what I'm gonna advise is that you spend more time with God and you listen to God more now take us back to that scripture take us back to that scripture the Bible says this it says that for the Lord your God proved you to know whether ye love him hallelujah and it says also I think um let me see there was a part let me see this part is of oh, the first part thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet all that dreamer of dreams hallelujah in those seasons you don't get to listen to the words of those people thank you in those seasons you don't get to listen to just any kind of person but listen to the voice of god harking to the word of god family please take note of this this is very very important harking to the voice of god because that is the only way you are going to become free that is the only way you are going to be set free and you will pass the test and overcome Bible said that when you're going through that test when God is trying to test your love test to see if you truly desire him if you truly want him in your life if you are coming to him not just for what you can get but for who he is you will go through that season of your life you will go through that moment of your life there will be shame there will be mockery there will be a disgracing part of that that season also there will be failures there will be rejection there will be pain but it's a test it's just a test the Bible says that the glory that we're gonna have is nothing as compared to what you go through you know when you are being tested for our light afflictions they are nothing as compared to the glory that we are going to receive after we must have gone through it all the glory that will comfort is great the glory that will comfort is bigger is weightier is better and so no matter how tempting it is don't go outside of the presence of the Lord don't go to another place to receive a solution don't go to psychics don't go to people that are not of God to receive a solution wait on the Lord wait on the Lord Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31 it says they that wait upon the Lord they shall renew their strength and they shall mount up on wings as eagles hallelujah they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint that is the importance of waiting upon the Lord what he releases to you will be great will be powerful I feel an anointing that shifting people this morning as I'm speaking the Lord is showing to me many people who are about to cross into the season of reward who are about to cross into the promised land who are about to cross to the next level I pray this prayer for you that nothing is going to stop you at the point of entry nothing is going to stop you at the point of entry the gates that have been opened they remain open and you will walk through them victoriously triumphantly in the name of Jesus you will receive your crown you will receive your reward in the name of Jesus you will be celebrated as well when you wait upon him you will have a testimony to give you will have a story to tell 
grace will multiply in your life the glory shall increase in the name of Jesus your name is changing I'm hearing this for somebody even your name will change even your name will change by the power of the living God by the doing of the Lord in the name of Jesus the Bible says it is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our sight what God does will be marvelous in the, in your sight I prophesy that what God is also about to release to you shall be marvelous in your sight it shall be beautiful in your sight it shall be great to behold in the name of Jesus somebody just open up your mouth right now and cry out to God I don't know the season you find yourself in right now but ask God for grace ask God for grace ask God for wisdom ask God for strength because there is something that is going to come out of it. Ask God for strength. I may not be there now, but I know God is taking me somewhere. My tomorrow may be small. My today may be smaller, but I know my tomorrow is great. I know my tomorrow is great. I may not have money to eat today, but I know I will be rich tomorrow. I know God will bless me richly tomorrow. I may be nobody today, but I know God is raising me to become a somebody tomorrow. Somebody may those declarations God is raising you to become somebody tomorrow God is preparing you to become somebody tomorrow I may not be married right now but I know God is preparing a king for me God is preparing a king for me God is preparing a king for me I refuse Refuse to give up and I will wait on you, Lord Jesus. I will wait on you, my father. I will wait on the Lord. I will wait on his promises. I will wait on his blessings. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I will wait on the Lord. I will wait on the Lord. Make bada basha da di akabarata sa ika da bado sha dege libra hanta lekete ya makuda barada shanda ya and now you go on and begin to pray to the Lord. Say Lord, bless me with the reward of waiting. Bless me with the reward of victory after my testing. Bless me, O oh God, with that which is needed, Lord, and restore me in the name of Jesus. E de balanta da bo shata libra. Bless my family, Lord. Bless this business, Lord. Bless this ministry. Bless me, Lord. Bless me, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, family. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Somebody just wave your hands and just give him praise. Thank him this morning. I want us all to help. Go on YouTube, like the video. The likes are down. Let's like it. Subscribe if you are new. And please share this word. There is somebody that is going through a testing season right now. And the person needs to be encouraged. Share this word with that person. Tell them it is for a reason. It's for a greater cause. God has prepared something great ahead of you. Share with them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you all so much for doing that. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your cooperation. I'm very grateful. And also like the video. God bless you as you do so. In Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you, Masha Carol. God bless you abundantly. Yes, you are waiting and it's coming true for you. Ashley Dancing, God bless you. Sister Raquel, God bless you abundantly in Jesus' name. Lily Johnson, God God bless you wow i wasn't even expecting this god bless you mary wilson god bless you in the mighty name of jesus god bless you hallelujah janet wilkerson god bless you in jesus mighty name 
amen and amen just go on and begin to thank god this morning lift up your voices and just thank god as we close say lord i thank you i thank you father for what you have done today i thank you for this encounter i thank you for this time i thank you for your presence i thank you for strength i thank you for grace and i thank you for my victory oh god at the end in jesus mighty name oh god bless you abundantly in jesus mighty name lift up your voices and just thank god as we go praise his holy name give him the glory say lord i thank you in the mighty name of jesus i thank you lord in jesus mighty name amen family god bless you oh god bless you too hallelujah wish you a wonderful weekend please you can go back listen to this word so it can encourage you one way or the other oh mary king god bless you abundantly sister god bless you mary king in jesus name amen thank you all so much family i'm so grateful so somebody says this god bless you man of god you have changed my life hallelujah glory to god hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah what a great testimony thank you so much thank you Beatrice God bless you Beatrice I see an open door for you sister Beatrice I see an open door for you in Jesus mighty name God is releasing a new opportunity hallelujah family thank you so much God bless you have a wonderful weekend I hope to see you again on Monday as we continue with our prayer stay blessed remain encouraged God bless you. Mary King, God bless you. Vanessa, God bless you.